Hey everyone, here is how I put together CC Carol, also called Aprons. I think they renamed it to include a boy version, but anywho, it is a super easy garment and I did the smock version and I'm, I am aiming that those who are making the inverted box plate version are still able to use the tutorial. And yes, I know I sound extra nasally in this voiceover, I'm getting over a cold. Anywho. Also, I changed how the back closes, and I did think quite long and hard on this, but instead of closing with overlapping buttons all the way down, I switched to a placket. Of course, it is sewing, so you do you, and I do have other tutorials such as CC Franny that goes over closing the back of the dress down with buttons. I just thought that a placket would be um, kind of a, a, a neater, cleaner look and, a, and an easier route to go. So, But like I said, if you want to do the buttons, go see that CC Franny tutorial and it should walk you through it. So to get started, I am using this leftover Liberty of London for the piping as well as the bottom band on the sleeves. So I cut two inch wide strips for the sleeve bands as well as one and a half inch wide strips for the piping, all cut on the bias, around the collar. Next I had four collars to cut out of my main fabric and this is super fun flannel. It is one of my favorites, especially for the winter time. And then I had two sleeves and I like to mark my sleeves with one knot at the front of the sleeve, one at the center of the sleeve, and two notches at the back of the sleeve. I also put one notch at the bottom of the sleeve to mark where to stop and stop those gathers. Next I had two belt pieces and I actually changed my mind and decided to cut these out of the Liberty of London fabric later on. So here is a major change that I made when making this garment and I only cut out one back on the fold since instead of having two backs that are going to overlap and come together, I just did one and I plack it, like I said before. I just prefer this look for an A-line sort of dress, but it is sewing, so you do you. If you go my route, then place the fold along the mark edge for the selvage edge, and this will give you some seam allowance for the placket. If you go the way the pattern calls for, then you can cut down the selvage marking and then finish according to my tutorial on CC Franny. Now when it comes to the front of CC Carol, you'll fold the peak if you're doing the inverted box pleat. Meanwhile, you're supposed to cut across the line for the smock version. So to make it easy and not destroy my pattern, I just folded the peak out of the way and then cut across the line, if that makes sense. So if you're doing the inverted box pleat route, then simply fold the pleating line so they are on top of each other as I'm demonstrating with the pattern so you get the idea. Then skip onto the back of the dress timestamps as always are linked in the description box below. I wanted to smock mine instead, so I marked with a friction pen where the smocking should start and stop. I also marked where the top row should start so I can line up that with my pleater needles. So I set up my pleater to smock, and yes, I mistakenly read the direction as seven half rows instead of ha seven full rows, so I redid this later. And a side note, and to address some of the questions I had gotten, it really doesn't matter how many rows you pleat here. I mean, I would smock at least four, but no more than eight personally. But yes, there is a discrepancy in the directions. On the pattern piece, it says to pleat seven and then smock five, while the directions say to pleat six and smock four. And I'm not trying to be a butt here. I'm just trying to clear up some of the questions that I've gotten about this pattern. Yes, the directions contradict themselves, but no, it really doesn't matter. Just smock however many rows you'd like. Personally, I recommend a number that's between four and eight. But like I say, it is sewing, so you do you. All right, off that topic and on to pleating this dress. I use a wooden dowel. It's my preference to use a wooden dowel whenever possible. So when you line up the dowel, you don't want it to be parallel to the dress's edge. Instead, you want it to be parallel to those where those pleats are going to be. So I rolled up my dress and then send it through the pleater. And as I mentioned before, I marked where the first row should start as a guide. And you are more than welcome to continue this mark as a line that goes across the front of your garment. I didn't want to do that, so instead I just followed the grain lines. So once you have your garment pleated up, then you can block the pleat. And I begin by finding one of my dots on one side and pulling out those threads that are the nearest to the dot. It does it. It's not rocket science, okay? So don't overthink it. And then just tying off those threads in groups of twos or threes. And then I give those threads a trimming, and I repeat the same thing to the other side. Now, here is a word of advice. You may want a few more pleats than what is suggested by the pattern, or maybe a few less. Just like the number of rows to pleat is a suggestion given by the pattern, the number of pleats is also a suggestion. 
It can change depending on personal preference and the weight of the fabric that you're using. So ideally, you want to keep this section of pleats centered on your garment. So if you add two pleats to one side of your dart, then add two pleats to the other side. Does that make sense? Just try to keep things equal so your pleats stay in the center of your garment. You'll pull up your threads until the pleats measure the suggested length from the pattern, and then the blocking is complete. And don't worry if some of your pleats look a little wonky. As long as they straighten up when you kind of pull slightly on the bottom as you're, I'm doing here, you'll be just fine. They will lay nicely after you smock them. Now, if they are not laying nicely, if you pull slightly, then you will want to replete. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. <laughs> So after all of that working, then I gave the front a good ironing, being careful not to squish those pleats, and then I moved on to the back of the dress. And yes, this is a major change from the pattern, just once again stating that if you want to go by the pattern, go right ahead and do that. There's nothing wrong with that option. You should be able to follow my tutorial on CC Franny to do that. However, I decided to do this folded placket method, and yes, I have a video tutorial that I'll link below. I wanted to do this instead of the buttons all the way down since I thought it was a cleaner look for an A-line shape and it also avoids having to put in six buttons or whatever buttonholes snaps, whatever, down the back of your garment. Of course, like I say, it is sewing, so you do you. Next, I put the back of the dress wrong side together with the front of the dress so I could join the two at the shoulder seams using French seams. And yes, I have a detailed video on how to do French seams that is linked below. Okay, so then I made some piping, and I know it, I need to get a piping foot at this point for my new machine. If you're new to my channel, this is a new machine for me, and since making this video, I have bought a piping foot. Anywho, I get my collars ready and trim up the piping about a quarter of an inch so I can easily attach them around my collars. Instead of piping, you could do ribbon, trim, whatever floats your boat, or you could forgo any treatments. That's always an option too. And then I put the collar lining right sides together with the collar and sew with the previous stitches attaching the piping facing up. And the goal here is to sew just inside those stitches so you have a really nice, neat, clean transition. Finally, I trimmed up that seam allowance and then turn the collar right sides out. I gave the collars an ironing and just to make sure there is no gap in between the collars, I ran a wide basting zigzag between the collars and I will take this zigzag out after I attach the collar to the dress. So if you did the smocking version, I would strongly advise to put some freezer paper at the top of the pleats before you attach your collar. I have an entire video explaining how to use this magical stuff with smocking. It is lovely and I cannot recommend it enough. Anywho, then I lined up the center of the collar with the center of the front of the dress. I pinned around the collar and then stitched around the neckline to attach the collar to the dress. And for now, I'm going to move on to the sleeves and then come back to attaching that bias strip later on. So I get those sleeves and after giving them an iron, I'll put two rows of gather stitches onto both of the top of the sleeves as well as the bottom of the sleeve. And this is where those little notches come in handy. And having two rows of gather stitches really helps to keep your gathers straight, keeps them straight when you sew back over them later on instead of them going wonky on you. So of course, like I say, it is sewing you to do, I sound like a, like a, record here, a broken record, but I really despise these little bias strip band things. Instead, I like to cut a two inch wide bias strip band and then I just use the pattern to get the length off of. I find that much easier. And then I fold the band in half and give it an ironing and then adjust the gathers until they fit the length of the bias band. I find the easiest way to do this is to gather up the gathers all the way around and then pin one side of the sleeve to the band and then let the gathers out until the other side of the sleeve matches up with the other side of the bias band. Hope that makes sense. After that, I stitch the band to the sleeve. Of course, you could do piping or lace first or do the lace band instead. There are plenty of options here. Anywho, the last thing I did with this band was to trim up the seam allowance so it's just big enough for the band to go around and reach those machine stitches. I'll sew this down by hand later on using those machine stitches and I have a video that goes over that method that is linked down below. Okay, so now I can attach the sleeve to the dress. First, I gather up those gathering threads and then pin the middle of the sleeve found by that notch to the shoulder seam of the dress. Then I pin one side of the sleeve to one side of the dress and then I pin the other side of the sleeve to the other side of the dress. And from there, I just adjust the gathers until everything fits nicely 
nicely and is evenly distributed. Then I sew the two together. Finally, I trimmed up the seam and then ran a zigzag to enclose those raw edges. Then I can move on to those little back strips and of course skip this step if you're not doing those. Time stamps again are linked below. So I folded them in half lengthwise so the right sides were touching. After giving them an ironing, I sewed starting at the end of the strip, putting my needle down and pivoting and then continuing to sew the length of the strip. Then I trimmed up those edges and turned that strip right sides out. I used this little pointer tool to push the corners at the end of the strip and I pinned the strip where I wanted them on the back of the dress and then basted them in place. Okay, and we are really close to finishing this dress now, so I pinned the sides of the dress, making sure those little bias bands are still folded under since I'm going to sew them by hand later on. And I will join the sides of the dress together using French seams. So then I attached the little bias band around the neckline. To do this, I folded the bias band in half so the wrong sides of the fabric are touching. Then I overlapped the band so at least half an inch is sticking out past the finished folded edge of the dress. Then I sewed all the way around the neckline to secure the bias band into place. Next, I sewed the bottom of the bias band down into place. So first, I folded the under that half an inch or so overhang so the raw edges are you know neatly enclosed and tidy and then I sewed from one side all the way around that neckline until I got to the smock and I didn't want to machine sew over those pleats so I'm going to hand sew into the pleats on the back side of the dress later on to secure this bias band down. Then I began sewing again after the pleats and finished up at the other side of the dress. Finally I folded up the bottom half inch of the hem and iron that down in place all the way around the dress and then I folded up two inches, placed a pin and then measured over a little ways another two inches and then placed another pin and then I ironed in between the pins. Now one thing to note about hemming this dress is that it is a slightly A-line shaped dress. So that means that when you fold up a hem like this, you're going to try to fit a longer distance into a smaller distance, which doesn't really work. So an easy way to fix this is to put little tucks into the hem on the wrong side of the dress. You will not be able to see them while your little one is wearing the garment, but it does help to get everything to fit in nicely. Of course, you could finish the hem off with some lace or something instead. So once I finished my hand sewing and added a button to the back of the garment, this was my finished garment. I hope this video was helpful. If y'all have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. And as always, I appreciate y'all for watching and I hope to catch y'all next time.